Suppose this encrusting sunset manipura is in your tank. It appears to be relatively healthy with decent polyp extension, but the coloration is just not right. It appears the tissue color is somewhat brown and muted, and you know this coral is supposed to be brighter orange in appearance. So what do you do to improve its color? Well, I polled all of you and gave you four options. One, do you increase nutrients? Two, do you decrease nutrients? Three, do you increase light intensity? Or four, do you reduce light intensity? The majority of you voted you would increase nutrients to get this coral to color up. Now here is the coral a few weeks later after I made a change. Stay tuned to learn what I did to achieve this color transformation. Welcome back to the channel everybody. I believe I have another great one for you all today. But before we dive into it, please support me by smashing that like button, subscribing and following my new build. I am coralless right now, so documenting the build process of my new Red Sea Reefer G2 is all I have going for me to keep me excited. But also, if you follow me along on that journey, please be patient. My first video was kind of a struggle. I'm slowly getting better as I go. So before we jump into things, let me first describe who the intended audience is for this video. Let's do another role play. Let's say this red robin coral is yours. You picked it up and noticed upon adding it to your tank, it has deep red coloration. So the picture on your left. Now after time passes, you notice some pretty significant growth and the coral seems to be happy. However, it seems to have lost a little bit of its luster. The coral no longer appears to have that dark red coloration. So you can't really figure out why, but you just try to accept this because it's growing well. Perhaps this is just how it's going to look in your tank, right? However, that original coloration of the coral when it first arrived kind of weighs on your mind and you want that color back. If this is you, then you've come to the right place to learn about tuning the coloration of your corals. You've been successful with growth, now you can focus on coloration. If you are still struggling even with getting your corals to grow, I'd recommend first checking out this video. I share a few insights into achieving good growth and towards the end I suggest that if you can get your corals to grow well, color will usually take care of itself. However, there are a few cases, like the red robin that I just showed you, where that doesn't always happen. And we're going to talk about that today. My goal for you all today is to help better train your eye so that you know how to address coloration issues in your corals. And for the most part, the insights I'll share today will apply to SPS corals. Your softies and your LPS corals are a little more forgiving, I think. And if you have poor coloration with those corals, it's usually something a little bit more significant that probably needs to be addressed as it relates to the overall health of your tank. There are five basic remedies or treatments or interventions or things you can do that I want to touch on today that can be used to improve coloration of your coral. I'm not going to spend any time on pests or more advanced dosing techniques today. You know, dosing things such as like potassium. We're going to keep it pretty basic. Because in my experience, I believe most all of us can achieve pretty good coral coloration without having to go above and beyond with our reef tanks. The first remedy I want to discuss is increasing nutrients. Now what do corals look like when they are starving? Well, here is our first example. Notice this coral on the left appears to be a little bit faded or light in appearance and has less than ideal polyp extension. 
This is the classic look of a coral that is starting to go hungry. You may find your corals look like this if your tank is too clean, you don't have enough fish load, or you are in the middle of trying to eradicate some type of algae by carbon dosing or using something like GFO. Now on the right is the same coral in the exact same location with no change to lighting. I simply started to feed the tank more and the tissue began to darken and the overall appearance of the coral looked more healthy and the coloration began to be more saturated. Now this next example is I believe a Valida, or I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's a coral I used to own. Now genetically this particular coral I don't think could ever be a showstopper. But let's look at the transformation after increasing nutrients. So on the left the coral appears pale, brownish, or almost tan, light brown in appearance. And the tip coloration is somewhat muted. On the right the tissue again appears more saturated and although still somewhat brown, the tips became a much more brilliant color of purple. Again, no change in lighting, just an increase in nutrients or in feeding of the tank. Having more nutrients in the water column promoted that transformation. Now sometimes you can keep pushing nutrients into the water column and that brown coloration towards the base or as you go down the coral will actually deepen and in many cases turn green. I attempted to do that with this coral but too much algae started to develop in the tank, so I kind of accepted this coloration as a happy medium. Sometimes we just have to find a balance, right? Everything can't be perfect. We have to have harmony in the tank. This third example shows a coral on the left clearly in starvation mode and on the verge actually of death. It is completely washed out. This picture is a good reminder to all of us to never give up on a coral, right? I mean, look how brilliant the blue, the red, the purple, even the pink coloration that's coming out of that coral in the after picture on the right. Now this gets a little tricky because sure it looks brown on the left, but you'll start to notice a pattern. Corals that are light brown or take on that tan appearance are usually starving. And they are not this tannish or light brown color because the tank is high in phosphate or nitrate. Corals and tanks with nutrient overload are also brown, but they'll appear to be much, much darker in appearance. So this picture is the last example I have for remedy number one, where we need to increase nutrients, where corals are starving. So I have a red planet coral here. Again on the left, it's, it's starving, it's faded, polyp extension isn't great. On the right, coloration is much deeper, more vivid, more saturated. Polyp extension is good. Now some of you may look at the background on that left picture and see algae on the back glass and think, my goodness, how can this coral be starving? Clearly there are an excess of nutrients in this tank, right, with what I'm seeing on the back glass wall. Well, it's hard to make out with the quality of this photo, but what you actually see or what is actually on the back glass at this time were dinos. Dinos will suck nutrients so fast out of your tank and leave nothing left for your corals to feed on. So just because you may see a little what you think is algae in your tank that's normal and that you should have adequate nutrients for your corals. If they're dinos, your corals are probably really, really hungry and starving for nutrients. The second remedy I want to briefly touch on would be to decrease nutrients or have less nutrients. So what does a coral look like that is in nutrient-dense water or that is clearly being overfed? You noticed in the first remedy where corals are in need of nutrients, I had good examples. I had several, plenty of pictures, right? But with the advancement of nutrient export systems and the intensity of lighting available to us all in this hobby, it's pretty rare now to find a coral that is browned out due to an excess of nutrients, but it does happen. And I do have an example. Here we go. This coral right here is browned out due to an excess of nutrients in the water column. In comparison to corals in starvation mode, you'll notice the brown coloration is much deeper much darker in appearance. Now clearly there is a relationship between nutrients and light intensity. To get this particular coral to color up and show better health on the right, I simply just reduced nutrients. That was the remedy I implemented. 
you could also try to blast it with light and that likely would wake it up too. So this is a good example or a good reminder that there are many different ways or not one single solution to address coral coloration. To simply put this coral in an environment where there was less phosphate and nitrate was all it needed to kind of wake it up and take on better, more healthy coloration. Now let's talk about remedy number three, which is to increase light intensity or PAR to improve coral coloration. Now let's look back at our encrusting sunset monopore example. I know many of you probably can't take the suspense any longer, right? So for this color transformation to occur, all I did was increase light intensity. Before the coral was in a par of about 150 and I was able to upgrade my particular light fixture at the time and get the coral closer to a par of 250. I did nothing else besides that and the coloration transform transformed before my eyes literally in like three to four weeks. Now the majority of you voted in my poll that they would increase nutrients to improve coral coloration for this particular coral. I think that may have been counterproductive unless you also paired that change with more light. To me, the tissue was already taking on a more brown appearance. It didn't look faded or tan in appearance like those corals that we saw earlier that are clearly starving. I do see how this was a tricky one though to review as the piece of rock rubble that this coral is on looks very clean, sterile, and new. It didn't have any algae or any seasoned coloration, suggesting that the tank as a whole may probably have been sterile. So I could see how it was a little challenging to guess on this one. Okay, today's remedy number four would be the need to reduce light or have less par hitting your coral to enhance its coloration. So what do corals look like that are getting too much light? Again, I have several of these. So I think in our modern day right now, with the intensity of light fixtures available to us in the nutrient export systems, our corals probably, for the most part, if they're not looking good, they're starving or getting too much light. So here's a purple bonsai variation of some type I picked up. You'll notice on the far left, the first picture, right after I added it to my tank, it was fairly vivid, had good purple coloration. A few short weeks later, it started, yes, to encrust on the rock, but only had a little bit of coloration in the tips, and polyp extension started to decrease. In the middle photo, it's starting to take on that classic light brown or tan appearance that suggests it's getting hit with too much light. So for this particular coral, I simply moved it lower. It, this, you know, unfortunately had to reset the encrusting process. So I lost a little bit of growth by having to remove it, move it lower. But with time after that move, polyp extension returned and so did that deeper purple coloration. Now I could have tried to increase nutrients and leave the coral where it was. I chose not to do this because I did a little research and found out that for this particular coral, they hold their deeper purple color in lower par. So this is a good reminder to spend some time researching each coral you pick up to determine lighting requirements, or simply ask, what kind of light intensity was this coral getting before you picked it up? So here's another example of an encrusting monopora that quickly paled out on me and I had to throw it way down in the sand bed and let it recover. Once it recovered, I placed it on the rock, but this time much lower in the tank. And this is just another example where all I did was reduce the light intensity the coral was getting, and it improved in coloration and health quite dramatically, a quick turnaround. Again, probably three to four weeks for this transformation to happen. Now the last remedy I wanna talk about just really briefly is light spectrum. I do think in some cases we can enhance coloration or at the very least the visible coloration to our eye of a coral through modifying our light spectrum. Whether that's turning up your reds a little bit or changing out one of your T5 bulbs for another color. This first example is your classic pink bird's nest, right? On the left it appears a little bit washed out, it's not bad but on the right it takes on a more saturated color. The only change I made was swapping out 
a 10K T5 bulb for a purple plus T5 bulb. So they were ATI bulbs. This is when I was running an all T5 fixture. I think this simple change helped the coral take on a, a better appearance. Now, I do have some belief that this change in spectrum also actually improved the color tissue of the coral. With the lights off and a flashlight spotlighting down on this coral at night, I could clearly see it was more pink. It was brighter, more hot pink, more vivid. So my experience shows me, at least with pink bird's nest type corals, is if you want to help them pop a little bit more and look a little bit brighter, try a purple plus uh, or try increasing your red LEDs a little bit. Now back in the day, we would even throw in a GE 6500K T5 bulb over our pink bird's nest corals, and that would really bring out the, the vivid pink if you could withstand the yellowing that bulb produced in color, you'd have to really balance it out with a lot of blue bulbs. But there was something to it in my experience, whether you use a purple bulb or a lower Kelvin bulb below 10K that doesn't wash it out, it really helped um, increase or enhance the tissue color of those pink bird's nest corals. This next example just shows how changing the spectrum of your lighting can mute or wash out colors in your corals. Now I know we all love the pop, the deep blue LEDs or the violet LEDs provide, but be careful, balance all that blue light with some white light so you can see the various colors each of your corals are capable of providing. But I get it though, this is an example where spectrum didn't really change the coral health per se. I know it comes down to more preference, but I do think too much blue light can wash out colors. So before you get ready, to implement any of the four remedies we've talked about, so reducing nutrients, increasing nutrients, increasing PAR, lowering light intensity, be sure to put that coral under some full spectrum lighting so you can assess its needs with, with more clarity. Well folks, that wraps up another one. We've covered five remedies you can leverage to improve the coloration of your corals. Perhaps more importantly though, I hope I helped you train your eye to know when a coral might need more light, less light, more nutrients, or less nutrients. Thanks again for tuning in, allowing me to share my experiences with you. Good luck on your journey for getting the best colors out of your corals, and we'll see you all in the next one.